third way to look at the noble path, how to keep repetition of the path in life uh, by completing it in one simple part of your behavior. The simile of the 12th student. I'm going to read this to you first. This is something that happened, actually happened in Sri Lanka. Could it really be true that someone could complete practicing the entire eightfold path in doing one smile? Well, back in 2015, I ran a meditation class at the Light of Asia Foundation in Batramula in Sri Lanka, a section of the city of Colombo. And this was just before I came over the first time to India. And after a few weeks of training, I asked the students to go home. And for one week, I wanted them to practice applying the Eightfold Path diligently during their day-to-day -day life. Now, when they came back for next week class, uh, we took turns reporting. Each person took turns uh, and had practiced to tell how they had practiced the folds of the path. And the first few women told me they managed to practice the folds a few times for the week, a couple of times when uh, they remembered to use this or that, you know. Several told me that they had been too busy with school, too busy with work, with children, etc., to practice it at all. And one said at least for one or two days, she watched more closely what she was doing according to one or two of the principles of the path, but it wasn't a strong report time. But I wasn't disappointed, not really, because they were trying, and I knew they were interested in learning more about this, but finally I got to the 12th student. And she was looking down by then, <laughs> looking down in her lap. And she reported that she had great remorse, that she did not use the path during her days. She was so very busy with many people, she did not have a chance to apply the path, not at all. But then a thought came to me. You could call it intuition if you want. I had personally, uh, I had, I had the, a thought came to me I had personally left behind, you know, I, I was a professional personnel placement counselor, and I knew all about employment positions and what people did in their jobs and so forth. I remembered something about her. So suddenly I asked her a question. What kind of work did you do? I asked her. Oh, I, I work as a customer service coordinator for a large store, she said. What part of the customer service work do you do? Well, I handle and approve of all of the returns for the merchandise that comes into the store. That's excellent, I thought to myself. When you handle a return, do you have to handle all the complaints from the customers too? Yes, yes, I handle about 50 to 70 people per day for all level of merchandise returns on various accounts. And, and when you do this work, do you smile? It was a simple question. For a moment, she paused and then energetically she smiled at me and told me that she had a smile, had to smile all day long, no matter what was happening for the customers involved, no matter how they behaved. Okay. That was part of her job. Can I ask you a few questions about this? She said, sure. And when you serve a customer, I'd like to know, are you smiling? Do you take the problems they are having? personally. Yet, no, ma'am, I, I couldn't do that in this job. I must keep everything I do impersonal in this job. I said, that's good. Do you keep wholesome images in your mind while you are uh, asking, uh, talking, talking and smiling? Or do you think badly of the people who return things to the store? Oh, I keep smiling and that helps me to remember to see the customer go away happy and not sad after the refund is given. Hmm, right, good again. Now, 
Do you use kind speech when you are dealing with these customers while doing your job? Oh, yes, she said. However the customer is treated produces a future reputation of the store. Excellent. And are you paying attention to your actions and sending kindness and sympathy for the situation of the customer who came in to return the items? Yes, I must be kind and thankful, she said. They came to the store to begin with, and I, uh, I must encourage them to come back and bring their friends for our service in the future. Do you need to keep smiling to accomplish this encouragement? Yes, ma'am, I do. Because they usually smile back then instead of becoming mean instead. <laughs> I know about that, I said. So would you agree this livelihood that you participate in provides you with a good and wholesome lifestyle? Oh, yes, she said with a bright smile on her face. Okay, now I said, uh, when you occasionally have a bad customer come in to present a large return, what do you do if they get a bit unwholesome with their behavior towards you? Oh, well, the customer is always right, she said. I sympathize with them and let them know that they are right. And I smile through whatever is going on because I know it will pass soon. There's your Anicha. Good job. You seem to be turning things around in most of these situations pretty well. I bet you are keeping up a lot of personal observation on each customer when they come in to see what needs to be done for each one. Is that right? That's right. How about your level of concentration in your job? Do you use a very hard concentration or do you keep it light and impersonal so that you can see things clearly without a headache? Yes, well, you have taught me to lighten up in my job through my practice and my immediate response to someone speaking down at me is now something that I can deal with anytime. And uh, really because I remember Anicha and I lighten up and I keep things impersonal. Well, you win, Joe, I said. <laughs> win what? There is no question in my mind that you have been practicing all week long on the daily basis, all eight points of this path. And I am also pretty sure that most of you others did more than expected too, but you didn't realize it also, you see? Everyone was looking at me in shock. The thing is that Joe thought that she did not practice at all what she had been learning for the past six weeks, and yet she was practicing it all day long every day. Harmonious perspective, each time she smiled to calm a customer and give them her support, she was practicing harmonious perspective. Because she didn't take anything that they said personally. At all times, she kept harmonious images of success in her mind as she smiled. I did, she said. <laughs> she kept a harmonious movement of mind's attention under control while she served each person. She practiced a harmonious lifestyle no matter what happened and left any negatives that she experienced at work. She didn't take them home with her. She's staying in the present time, you see. She pursued her harmonious practice of right effort to let go of any objectionable things in the transaction, and she brought up supportive good things to replace them in her mind. She practiced harmonious observation to establish what was essential and what was unessential before she replied to any request. She kept a productive amount of concentration operating in her job. She applied a harmonious collectedness of mind, and therefore she completely used the path during her entire day, and her smile was the strongest balancing point she used for this job. The others were all happy, 
And one of our shyest students accomplished this so well because she had been shy in class. She'd been quiet. And the next time we did this, there was a new perspective everyone used in interweaving their jobs in life with following the Eightfold Path. They started to watch carefully after work, what happened and how much of it did I use? That was important. So the summary piece of this Eightfold Path works and you have to remember where it leads us all. The art of living begins through a selfless, harmonious perspective of whatever is happening in life. We need to stop taking things so personally. It helps uh, to ring, uh, it helps to what? Hmm. It helps to um, hmm, bring us up, bring us up and keep number two, wholesome imaging in our mind. We must learn how to investigate further to establish a perfect, number three, harmonious communication with our mind and all others via our own thoughts, words, and actions. You need to watch how mind's attention impersonally moves without us asking it to and discover the value of encouraging a more, number four, harmonious movement of mind's attention. By letting go of things, instead of taking them personally, you will reduce stress in your life. There's no question about this. And develop more harmonious lifestyle. It trickles back to going home if you've done this during the day. As you smile, the smile begins to return, you are encouraged to pursue a harmonious practice all the time that the Buddha called right effort. He assured us that by replacing unwholesome tension filled mind states, relaxing our head and smiling as you return to wholesome, calmer mind states, you're going to feel relief. Keeping the practice going wherever and whatever we are doing gradually helps us to notice how all phenomena impersonally arises and passes away. Perfecting the skill of harmonious observation allows you to see clearly the true nature of everything, how life actually works. And number eight, gradually you will take achieve equanimity by balancing a softer, harmonious collectedness of mind, which in turn will lead you to repeat a practice that abandons snap reactions in life. It replaces these with pe peaceful responses, and we then begin to live our lives with more compassion and loving kindness to all beings. As we practice in this way, we are naturally shifting from a mind that was set up for war to peaceful coexistence with the smallest to the largest life form on earth. And this happens due to repetitious practice, personal experience, and clear understanding. It was the Noble Eightfold Path that led the Buddha to the doorway of peace. He, his offering, and all his practice and teaching came to us. It includes the promise of an eventual end to all suffering if we pursue the same practice to repeat his experience by closely following his instructions. So this is a combination of things written over a period of time. And... The gist of this is not to confine yourself with one idea about who do these Buddhists think that they should tell us how to have our morality and run our life, you know, when all the Buddha is really doing is talking to you about good operation, the best operation 
possible of the human machine, the human being. That's all he's doing. When he teaches you the precepts, he shows you how to protect yourself from the hindrances. When he gives you the eightfold path, it's like going over the whole body of a car that you're designing and showing how you built it just right, each part of it, so it would protect you when you drove the car. That's like what the Eightfold Path is, okay? But we can also see how you can put it out in a simple way of wise and unwise or skillful and unskillful behavior to a whole community, that angle, where you can come to the meditation and then finally you think, what is this for? And then you take a class with me like they did and you find out it's to find out yourself. Are you actually using this eightfold path in life, at school, all the time, wherever you, wherever you are? <laughs>